Welcome back to the lab. Right, so in the previous video, in the comments section, a few guys, a uh, few of you guys, were asking how I folded up the chassis rail in the back of the Gloria here. The, um, this bit here. You're asking, how did I do that? So, uh, excuse me, flicking backwards and forwards between cameras, just a uh, quick edit at the front of this one. So just to show you how I did it, I've done a, um, a bit of a tutorial, whatever, showed you how I did it. Don't touch your face in a pandemic, even when your lips itchy. Um, this isn't necessarily the most professional way of going about it. Normally you would use a Jenny, um, which is, let me draw some pictures. Hang on, we'll turn this camera around like this. And see, this is post video, right? So there's, um, there's this isn't awesome drawing, isn't it? I don't even know if that even makes sense now looking at that, but whatever. So there's a, a machine that's called a Jenny. Uh, there's finding a pen now. There's electric ones and there's manual ones. And what they are is essentially is a couple of shafts like this. And there's a wheel that goes on the end here and a wheel that goes on the end there. And you put your bit of, bit of metal in here. And depending on what the wheels are, you do various different things with the metal. So they both actually have to be the same size. Ignore my drawing. They have to be the same diameter. Or at least there has to be gears here to make the surface speed of this wheel and this wheel the same at this point. Otherwise you just munt your material and do a crap job of whatever it is you're trying to do. So there's various different versions of the wheels. Let me just draw them again. That can go in there to do various different jobs. So there's ones that have got a little dent in them like that. We're not going to worry about um, trying to line up with the shafts here while I'm drawing this with the camera. It's too hard. And then the other one might have a little raised section like that. So obviously if you put your, um, put your piece of metal in there, it's going to end up with a shape like that through it. So there's those. And then there's other wheels which are going to just draw it just quickly, whatever. They'll have something like that and a piece that comes down here like this. And then um, the other wheel will sit here like this. So obviously if you put your piece of metal in here, it's going to end up with a shape on the end of it. So these are usually got a, a taper here or taper on this piece here or whatever. But hard to draw. Um, there is... There is actually a Jenny in here. I do have one. I do use it sometimes. It's under there in that purple box. It's a little bit difficult to use. Um, and, and that's why I haven't used it in this instance. They do do a pretty good job. Um, handheld, man, well not handheld, sorry, manually driven ones are a bit harder to use because obviously you haven't got two hands free to drive the machine. but one hand on the handle and hold your metal in the right angles and twist it all around all these curves that we've got going on here so they can be they can give a better result obviously um, if you're just forming a metal to a shape once uh, basically just bending it over or twisting it over rather than hitting it multiple times with a hammer then forming is probably going to be a better result however um, old school techniques hammer and dolly just as fine and I mean I'm sure you can talk to any old tradesman and find out same deal and there's other ways to do it as well you can use a um you can make a former you can make a, a shape out of a block of wood and clamp the piece of metal to that and beat it with a rubber mallet or a panel beating hammer or if it was um, aluminium and you're making aircraft parts we use lead strips we slap the material with the lead strips or straps I guess you call them um, and that shapes it like that. And then the other way to do it, you can do things in a rubber press. That's the same sort of deal where you build a pattern, a given shape, and then you put a big, massive, big piece of rubber at real high pressure over the top of it, and it will shape the material to that shape. Um, but the question was, how did I, how did I do it? How did I shape those chassis rails? So I've shown you guys how I did it. All right, let's watch the video. Welcome back. Right, some of you guys asked how I made, watch out for that blend, it'll fall down, that was um, that was that, I've put that 
up there so that I don't forget to make the new one and put that in there before I put the front section on and then go. Oops. That time's happening. Right, some of you asked how I made that. It's, um, I can, let's quickly run through that. It's actually, it's not hard. Um, and it's, it's pretty, it's common sense. I'm not like a super genius or anything making that. It's just good old fashioned metalworking. So let's have a look. Uh, push that button there. Boom. So here's pan break, right? If we get a piece of metal, now here's whiteboard too. This makes it real easy. If we get a piece of metal and we stick it in this pan break, because of the way this one's designed, there are some real cool um, electromagnetic ones that would be able to fold what I've made, but not this. And the, the three green, this was, I don't know, I think they're like 1200 bucks or something like that. They're a bit less, maybe. Whatever, look it up on uh, Machinery. There you go. Machinery House's website. Look it up. Oh, look, the model was a PB4. And you can look up and see what those cost. But you can't just put a piece of metal in a standard pan break and put a fold on an edge like that. It's physically impossible. You can only do a straight line. So you fold it there, and then you would have to beat this whole piece back down flat and try and panel beat that fold out of it, make that go away, which you can do sometimes depending on what you're doing, especially if it's only a, like if this piece here is way over here, it's just a little wee tiny bit at the end. Sometimes that works out that that's the best way to do that. Uh, usually not, but sometimes it is. So you could do that. It would be a bit yucky. Um, not ideal. Depends how thin the metal is and all that sort of carry on. And then you'd have to do another fold here. And then you would have to bash all this over using a hammer and dolly. So the other way around that, uh, I'm going to use my finger because I don't have my paper towels here. But that worked pretty good anyway, didn't it? The other way around that is looking at this from the end view. This is folded like this and it's got a fold on each side of course that fold comes all the way down so that would look like that and that side would look like that Ta -da! looking at it from the end view if you want to do this bit just the end here so this is now a sectional drawing through here and then you would only see that and, and that sorry I was, my camera was wandering off on you wasn't it you can get some um, steel bar box section put that there like that Put one on the other side. Put some big ass G clamps on there. Can I draw a G clamp today? Oh, it's not bad. Yeah, it's a pretty good G clamp. Clamp those together, hard out. Your piece of metal will be here to start with. Just hit it with a bloody hammer. Boom, 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 boom. That will shape that like that. This piece here becomes a dolly. And um, away you go. So you can do that for this entire length here. Piece of bar like that. On either side, that's that section from there to there. Piece of cake. You can do this next piece by putting a bar like that. Right on the other side, you do this bit here, and then you can do this end piece. Same deal. Got to watch where the camera is going. It's really hard to do this um, like that, and you can do this end piece here. These bits in the in the middle here that are curved, hammer and dolly. Easy. So like I said, it's not, um, don't have to be a genius to do that. It's pretty simple. I just try not to hit my head off. Thanks for what I go under there. Um, dolly. Easy. Cheap set from, I don't even know where I bought that from. The mini, mini, mini hits with hammer. Panel beating hammer. Look, it even looks. But used and abused, doesn't it? Has it got a brand name on it? Nah, so cheap, no brand name. Does the job though. Um, there's a couple of other options for dollies, of course, there's different shapes depending on what you're trying to achieve. Um, is that loud? Should have been loud. Um, so it's pretty easy, really. Um, this other piece, 
Let's swap the camera around again. Boom, swap that back around there. This one here, uh, pretty much the same deal, except we're dealing on, dealing with a slightly larger scale. Um, these were, these lines here give me an indication of where I need to fold things, where I need bends happening. I for inside, so I don't bend it the wrong way, and then go, oh, and then have to try and bend it back the other way again, which can be uh, interesting. Only really get away with that once, and then things will be stuffed. But um, this one, of course, is a little bit funkier because it then curves up. And then it does straighten out, but this fold doesn't. Um, same deal there. It curves up. And it's doing that curve while it's going around a curve that way. And then it's coming back again the other way. At which point we can use our stretcher shrinker. Now this is just a little machine that you put your piece of metal in between these jaws here. I'm trying to watch where my foot's going, where, where the camera's going at the same time. See that? It'll clamp the material. Boom. And then it'll stretch it out wider. So, um, it's, they're a pretty cool toy to play with. Let's have a look. Is there a bit of scrap metal here, Glenn? Oh, there's my safe jewels. We could sacrifice a safe jewel for the sake of... No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. What do we got? I'm looking for a bit of scrap metal guys there's not really anything popping up let's see if we can do that'll do let's see if we can do a demonstration for you just quickly using my cheap ass pan break doing everything one-handed which is probably not recommended good way to hurt yourself ah what do you reckon 90 oh, i don't think i quite got 90 degrees out of that Oh yeah, I did. Oh no, I didn't. Not perfect. Yeah, it's close enough. Close enough for what we're doing. Right, so we'll put this in here. This is not the easiest to get in there sometimes. One-handed, as I say. A bit tricky trying to do this using the camera. There we go. It's in there. So now, when we stretch that fold, we're going to create a depending on which side you want to be looking at. If we're looking at it from this way, it becomes convex. If we're looking at it from this way, it becomes concave. Cave is in hole, is in hollow, is in you're the inside of a, a dent or whatever. You see, just from one little bit, we've already got a little bit of a curve happening there. It's quite thick material, this, that I picked up. It's not the easiest stuff to manipulate one-handed. Uh, there we go. Just like that. Still relatively flat that way. Give it a little bit of a dolly to tidy up if you need to. That's how you curve that leg net. You can if you... I mean, the other way to do it, if you don't have a stretcher shrinker, if you support this edge here, and the other edge over there and this edge here using blocks of wood and stuff like that and then support it over a you'd need a much bigger distance than that but there's an example over a span and then hit on the inside here with a hammer you will get it to curve a certain amount might not be very pretty though right so don't need that anymore over here is where it um where it all starts Pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Sorry about the flickering with the um, with the lights, LED lights. The, um, Kelvin's video was a bit yucky, wasn't it? Kelvin's camera didn't like um, the LED lights in here. My cell phone gets away with it a bit better. But um, Kelvin's video was a bit flickery. It's all his fault, so we can blame Kelvin. He, uh, he accepted liability for blame um, some time ago on the lab, so... Anything goes wrong, it's on him. We can pin him down. Here's our... Again, one-handed, difficult... Here's our template. It's not 100% accurate. It's good enough that we can... I can never hold this up here with one hand for you guys. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. But 
that goes up there. It's basically the right shape for the job that we're doing. Cut it a little bit oversized and start from there. I'm going to do that. Here we go. That's the raw piece of material cut. Pretty close to the shape that it needs to be. This end here I haven't bothered too much. It's just meh. Um, and as I explained, a couple of bits of metal. In this case, it's stainless steel. It's quite thick walls. Got a nice radius on it. It'll just work well. And um, that's my line I'm folding to. And of course, I have to remember the bottom folds the other way. So I'll have to uh, transpose that line onto the other side and fold it the other way. In this case, there's only a small section of material just at the bottom here that would be folded if I were to put that in the pan break and fold that back down that way. So I will probably do that. It's a lot easier than bashing with a hammer and all that sort of carry on. As for the rest of it, no, can't do that anywhere really. So very good. Right, next thing you'll see maybe it might be folded to shape. So there we go with the first test fit of our new piece. Brackets not in here yet. It's going to be a disaster shortly. I'm going to be focusing on videoing and forget about that bracket, and then I'll be like, oh no, because there's no way it's coming from this end. That's all closed off. You can't bring it from there. I can probably squeeze it in through this hole, I guess. Poke it down that way. So, wouldn't be the end of the world if I got that piece on there. She's all over at that point. But, um, first test fit. Not bad, not perfect, but pretty damn close. And these things um, very rarely are 100% mint fit, maybe on modern cars, not so much on 1969 cars anyway. Uh, this is still a bit long, here's the actual mark here that I said that needed to be that length, and lo and behold, there's the other side there, that's probably within a millimetre of where that needs to be. So that can just be trimmed off there, that'll be mint. There's a joggle to happen here, so it, it, it's on top of another piece there. It needs to come along, it needs to have a little wee step in it. These marks that I put in here, they line up with the holes that need to go in the chassis rail. Those ones, so I can make sure I put these back in the right spot, give or take two or three millimetres, it's not going to matter even five millimeters you'd probably get away with it um so that's that is the stretcher shrinker you can see the teeth marks in that um for these curves get these right a little bit up here a uh, lot more material sitting around here than what there was before obviously this needs trimming off looking at it from the other side you can see there's significantly more material than what we need um i can mark the other side of Sorry, mark the other side of that so that this piece here lines up perfectly with that so that this is horizontal across here rather than being wonky. Doesn't appear to be too far out there. In fact, I'd call that pretty good to about this point here somewhere. Yep. Past that, it starts to go around this curve and up there. So... That wasn't bad, not a bad effort for someone who puts radiators in backwards. <clears throat> so we'll carry on with that. Get the uh oh what's the time? So then it's like quarter to three. I might see if I can get that stitched in today and call it a day at that point. That would be pretty good progress for today. Today um it's actually a piece for a diesel, which is a bit unusual for the lab. Normally <coughs> excuse me. If diesel stuff turns up here, it leaves being petrol, but never mind. So diesel doubt pipe, he wanted um, this front section here was two and a half inch and expanded out to three inch around about here somewhere. He wanted to run that whole thing at three inch, so done that. Made enough room to get our nuts on there and get a spanner on there. So And then it the, needs to have the wastegate pipe plumbed back into wherever it is. I need to look at some pictures we took when he dropped it off and um, put a nice, lovely, beautiful piece on there with a flexible coupling and all that. So carry on. 
<sighs> Lots happening. I want to put that on scales and see what it weighs. What I reckon we're at now. It was like 1,200 right back when it was first four-wheel drive, but there's been some changes with drive shafts and CV joints and universals and things. Um, I'm quite keen to see what that weighs now. There's quite a lot of weight coming out of the back of it for various different bits and bobs. So don't think we'll be down to 1,100. We might be 11... 70 maybe yeah that might be being a bit optimistic 30 kgs is quite a lot i don't know if we've dropped that much but we'll see there we go that's not coming out again i haven't finished with the welding yet but sort of sort of welded in there i've got to do some plug welds you'll have to forgive me earlier on in the video i was calling um spot welds i was calling them stitch welds it happens i'm a human being so um that's that at that point okay so and now i need to go and get that there it is over there da, 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 da. i need to go and make something like that or an equivalent of it doesn't have to be exactly the same as that but it has to do the same job and um smash that up inside the hole there it's a bit brown up there, doesn't it, with the camera? That's funny, it doesn't actually look like that in person, but never mind. Um, got those marks that I pointed out, sorry, there you go, that I pointed out earlier. Gives our placement fore and aft. Um, the bracket itself will give our height this way. And of course I can compare to the other side, which we haven't destroyed yet, so we know where things are supposed to be according to that. Um, these inside two holes, we don't actually even use those anyway we could leave those out probably won't i'll put them in anyway so um get that bracket in there and then i'll make up the piece that goes across the bottom we'll call that a cap for for the sake of the discussion now i was going to clamp this up in the right spot that's quite hot just about people fingers silly boy uh just did those wells just before um i was going to clamp this up in the right spot and make my cap and then tack weld my cap and a couple of spots and then take that whole assembly off and put it on the bench so it's easier to weld but I figured it probably would distort and then I'd go fit it up in the car and have a whole heap more work to do um, stretching shrinking hammering dollaring dollying um, all that sort of carry on. but there you go um, I'm gonna keep going it's probably gonna be in another video you guys have seen what you want to see um, the rest of the stuff you don't need to watch it all happen all over again so that'll be abbreviated to hell was thinking about doing some stuff on that mm, not sure if i will or not i'll probably curse it if i do work on that then the event will be cancelled so you'll have to excuse the tui that's out here somewhere i don't know where he is oh there he is right there you see that right in the middle of your screen no wonder he's noisy Never mind. That's all right. Um, carry on. So yeah, I'll get that that cap on that bracket in there. That cap on there. Um, then we can make that little extension piece that, um, that Nissan has done here. That follows through. You can see the line where it joins on there. That's going to be wicked fun making that. And then um, I'll put this panel back on. Fun and games. Right. Cheers, bye.